Woman who buys $7 flea market painting realizes the famous painter. Ah, the thrill of the thrift. There's nothing like going to your local flea market to see what kind of gold they're hiding. Many times these treasures are chipped Santa figurines or a half-used tube of lotion. This has happened. But you never know what's hiding in the shelves or what's inside of a $7 box at a flea market. In Virginia, Marcia Martha Fuqua was just happy to find this innocuous-looking box that contained a Paul Bunyan doll, a plastic cow, and a small painting. It wasn't until she saw the name on the bottom of the frame years later that she knew how special that minute artwork really was, and how much of a nightmare owning it would turn out to be. Funnily enough, the painting wasn't what originally caught her eye. I'd never seen a Paul Bunyan doll before, Martha said in an interview with Huffington Post. Though the doll was unique, it definitely wasn't the most exciting thing in the box. Martha looked at the painting below and decided to keep the art for its frame. She stuffed it in a white plastic trash bag, and for a year and a half, she moved the bagged painting from one place to the next in her home. When she finally decided to get the pesky picture from the frame, her mom, who was a former art teacher and painter, encouraged Martha to get the painting appraised by an art specialist. The frame, she said, had a pretty famous name on it. On the front of the image, there was a plaque that read Renoir, as in French Impressionist Pierre Augusta Renoir. Martha took her mom's advice and sought out the opinion of Anne Norton Craner, an expert at the Potomac Company Auction House in Virginia. She took it out of her plastic bag and it really looked like the real thing, Anne said. There was beautiful light, it looked like a painting from 1879. When Anne examined the painting, there was a label on the back. Anne used the label to search through Renoir's catalog of comprehensive works and got a hit. This is when Anne was almost certain the painting was the real deal, a Pierre Augusta Renoir original. Still, she needed more evidence. See, Anne suspected the painting Martha found and placed in a trash bag was Renoir's Paysage Bords de Sienne, or Landscape on the Banks of the Sienne. While Renoir and his mistress, Lisa Trahot, were enjoying a meal along the Sienne River, Renoir took his linen napkin and painted the beautiful picture for her. And the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and additional research by a Renoir expert confirmed it was real. Suddenly, the conversation changed. Martha started seeing dollar signs. Martha was absolutely delighted to find out the legitimacy of the painting, because the auction house valued it at $75,000 to $100,000. I'm just glad I didn't sell it at one of my yard sales, she said. But this wasn't a happy ending for Martha. While you may guess that the next part of this story involves Martha selling the Renoir and going on a nice vacation, that's not what happened. Experts started looking into how the painting ended up at a thrift store. The answers were ugly for everyone. The journey started when Herbert May, a Renoir collector, purchased the painting from the Berheim June Gallery in Paris, and he took it to the state side. His wife Sadie was a benefactor of the Baltimore Museum of Art. Sadie and Herbert lent this painting and a few others to the Baltimore Museum in 1937. But if the painting was hung in a museum in the 30s in Maryland, how did it end up in a Virginia flea market in 2009? When Sadie died in 1951, she donated the paintings to the museum. During some legal back and forth, the painting disappeared. An unknown person, probably a rabid Renoir fan, took it when they had the chance. No one put any of this together until 2012, when Martha attempted to set up the auction for Paysage Boards de Sienne. A reporter from the Washington Post discovered documentation that proved the artwork was stolen. Then, the FBI art crime team stepped in and confiscated the image. Martha wasn't pleased by this development and started a massive legal battle with the art museum. She thought she had the right to keep the painting because she didn't know it was stolen. That's not how it works, Martha. Judge Leone Brinkema, sketched below, quickly dismissed the claim. The museum has put forth an extensive amount of documentary evidence that the painting was stolen. Brinkema said in her ruling, under the law, the person who purchased a stolen museum item is not the rightful owner. 
All the evidence is on the Baltimore Museum's side. You still have no evidence, no evidence that this wasn't stolen, the judge told Martha's legal team. And even if Martha could have kept the painting, it had a much lower price tag according to the FBI. The FBI appraiser valued Paysage at $22,000 instead. The piece needed some restoration work and most art collectors weren't currently interested in Renoir because they considered his style to be old-fashioned. The Baltimore Museum of Art celebrated the painting's return home as part of the museum's centennial party. No one knows what happened to the painting after the 50s or how it arrived at the flea market. The moral of the story is you can't own something that was already stolen. Also, finding a famous painting in a flea market comes with baggage. Other painting thrifters were open to sharing their experiences with Martha. A prior theft isn't the only pitfall.